Welcome to the Nutrition Hero Podcast with Dr. Brad Watts, making heroes in functional medicine and clinical nutrition. Now, here's Dr. Watts. Welcome, everybody. This is Dr. Brad. You're listening to the Nutrition Hero Podcast once again. And thanks for tuning in. We are the only podcast that celebrates and protects both the art and the science of functional medicine clinical nutrition. So welcome to the program. We're going to start today by going through a couple of mechanisms. And uh, somebody shoots an email in after listening to one of our last podcasts, and they say, what about the mechanisms? What, what's the deal with the mechanisms? Why are we talking about this stuff? And how am I even supposed to apply it? And really what they're asking is, is not why is it useful. They're asking, how do I get better at this so that I can actually use it on a daily basis? And so I'm going to share a quote with you, and this isn't me, by the way, (laughs) this isn't me, but one of the things that I enjoy is a quote that uh, has some emotion behind it, a quote that has some story behind it, where the person tells you the quote, and you go, oh man, I wonder what they went through that allowed them to be able to communicate this. So um, here's a quote for you, and it talks about how, how to accomplish something that seems untouchable to you at the outset. And so here's the quote. It says, you don't set out to build a wall. No, no, you don't do that. Actually, you set out to lay a brick today, just one brick. Lay that brick as perfectly as that brick can be laid, and then you're going to do it again tomorrow, and you're going to do it again the day after that. And at some point, somebody's going to ask you, how did you build that wall? And you're just going to look at them and smile, and you're going to say, talent. And that really right there, in a nutshell, is what I want to communicate by talking about mechanisms today, is I want to be able to communicate something that, it doesn't happen overnight, but what it does is you're just watering it little by little, and over time, you start to build this clinical acumen, you start to build this ability to communicate with your patients, that is unparalleled in your community. There's nobody that is going to be better than you, because you are somebody that never stops learning. All right, so with that in mind, today I want to talk about the mechanism of Hashimoto's. And I shouldn't say the mechanism, I should say a mechanism of Hashimoto's. And uh, as science, clinical science and research is ever-changing, ever-growing, and the database that we have access to just continues to expand, we get further and further away from using words like, we used to think, but now we know, right? Like, this is 100% reality. So what I'm going to say about Hashimoto's mechanism today is in our current understanding in the functional model, we have this situation that is completely misunderstood by most practitioners, completely most uh, completely misunderstood, excuse me, by most medical providers, and even most researchers. Because what I find is that people that sit in a laboratory for a job and they don't communicate, like to them, healthcare is a math equation. To them, healthcare is A plus B equals C. And really, biology is not math. And it's really hard for, for a practitioner, somebody that's in the trenches, sitting knee to knee with patients, somebody that is digging in on people's lives, participating with them in the nitty gritty stuff. It's really hard for that type of a doctor, that type of a, a nutritionist, that type of a provider to treat a person as a math equation. But when the person's not sitting in front of you and you're just looking at physiology in a book, sitting in a lab running equations and and, uh, running tests on supplements and whatever, it turns into a math equation. There's no heart in it. And so when we talk about Hashimoto's, one of the things that I found is that you have somebody that's dealing with Hashimoto's and maybe you discovered it with them. Maybe you ran the antibody testing. Maybe you were willing to look where no doctor has looked before. And you found out, hey, Bill, hey, Susan, you have Hashimoto's. This is serious. We need to talk about this. And what happens is you start to see these antibody tests on paper that are ever increasing, so it seems. And the patient gets diagnosed with an autoimmune condition. And they show up in your clinic and you're like, hey, this is reality now. What are we going to do with this? right? Like everybody thinks it's a thyroid problem. And so today, if you don't get anything else out of this podcast episode today, please let it be this. 
Hashimoto's is not a thyroid problem. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Thyroiditis is the result of the problem. The problem is the immune system. The problem is the genetic expression. The problem is the epigenetic switches that have been flipped on, causing the body to express the immune system condition, causing the immune system to destroy the gland. And so when you go and you're talking with somebody and they say, yeah, doctor says my thyroid's a problem. I have this thing called Hashimoto and uh, it's, you know, they said it's thyroid disease. Kind of, <laughs> right? That is kind of the, the situation. It's like part of the story, but it's not the cause, it's not the trigger of the thyroid disease, right? Thyroid disease is the result. And so we have to look at root cause, functional medicine, clinical nutrition, we're all into the root cause situation here. And so when we look at this through the right lens, we want to bring some sense into it for the patient and for the provider. You might, and I found myself in this position on more than one occasion, you might be on the phone someday discussing this with that patient's uh, primary care doctor or that patient's endocrinologist, and the endocrinologist is arguing with you, going, that's just not the way it works. And you go, okay... Do you have a physiology book? Let's talk about this. Bust it out. Let's organize. So here's what happens, right? So we get this genetic expression, and now the immune system is upset, and we're creating antibodies to the thyroid. And it might be thyroid peroxidase, so an enzyme. It might be uh, thyroglobulin, so we're talking about carriers. And we end up in this position where this patient's thyroid function starts to go down because we're just metabolizing the thyroid. Well, when this takes place, Remember this, this is the key point right here. When you are treating a patient effectively, the TSH will rise. In modern medicine, when you're treating the patient effectively, the TSH drops. And so there's a huge difference here. There's a chasm between reality and what they're trying to achieve. In modern medicine, what's happening is they're supplementing or they're medicating the victim with thyroid medication. They're medicating the victim with thyroid medication. So that means that if the thyroid's producing less hormone, what do we do? That's right, we give them thyroid hormone. And what happens is the TSH comes down and we're replacing thyroid function. That's all well and dandy and it's awesome and it's great and people get a lot of value out of it. Uh, but then there's this other portion of the population that has the situation where they still feel like garbage. Even though their TSH is normal, they feel like trash. And it's this person that ends up in your office. It's this person that looks at doing something that's work, man. It's work. Nutrition is work. Dietary programming is work. If it's not your lifestyle, it's work. So what happens, they show up in your clinic and they're frustrated because the lab test looks normal, right? So what are you going to do? Well, we're going to make that lab test look not normal. And then we're going to go back to the doctor and the doctor says, hey, you're getting worse. You're getting worse. Stop going to see that nutritionist. Stop going to that functional medicine doctor. They don't know what they're talking about. You're getting worse. Your TSH is going up. All right? So the doctor tells that to the patient. The patient comes back to you and says, Doctor, my primary says that I'm getting worse and that I need to change what I'm doing with you. I can't eat this way anymore. Stop taking the supplements. My TSH is going up. All right? right about that moment is where you should have this huge smile on your face. Right about at that moment is where you should say, wow, we're doing it. It's happening. Okay? Now, if we want to avoid that moment but still have the result, that would be the best case scenario. Like tell the patient on the front end, hey, TSH is going up. That means we're doing a good job. All right? So when you see your TSH go up, that means that it's time to smile. We're getting there. When that happens, you are in best position in the world as a functional medicine doctor treating somebody that has Hashimoto's because you're in a position where you're winning. The immune system is chilling out. All right? So here's what happens. When the immune system attacks the thyroid, it's like a mean little kid walking up to you with a needle. And you're holding a bunch of water balloons. It's kind of like that. Mean little kid, they don't just take a water balloon from you. No, no, no. They're going to pop it. They're going to pop that water balloon. And that water is going to go someplace. Right? So when Hashimoto's is destroying the thyroid gland, it's not destroying the hormone necessarily. Right? There is a mechanism where that happens, but in general, it's not destroying the hormone necessarily. What's happening 
Is this destroying the gland, the container? Right, we're metabolizing the container. Just like the mean little kid's going to pop the water balloon. Where does that water go? All over your shoes. Where does the hormone inside of the thyroid gland go? Where does that go? Into the bloodstream. Right? Into the bloodstream. So we're getting this leaching effect. It's not normal secretion of hormone into the bloodstream, but we're getting this excess, this extra leaking of hormone into the bloodstream. And so I call it leaking, you might call it sifting, you might call it leaching, whatever it is. The point is, is that it's ending up in the bloodstream, and your pituitary is reading it, right? Your pituitary is reading it. Hypothalamus is reading it, and we end up in a situation where your thyroid-stimulating hormone is going to go down. Because we have an abundance of thyroid hormone in your bloodstream now, above and beyond what your normal is. And so with this Hashimoto's mechanism, this person might have awesome moments where they feel really good. I've had a great three or four days here. And then all of a sudden they crash and they're tired and they're slow, right? Just like they got done working out. They get pain syndromes because their metabolic function decreases. Now they can't process this lactic acid as efficiently as they once did. So now they feel like they just got done working out. Maybe I'm sensitive to that today because I just got off of this thing called an alpha field. Oh my goodness. We've never done that. Not that I'm plugging a company here, but if you've never done a workout on an alpha field and you just let somebody show you who's boss for a few minutes, oh my goodness. Nice to be uh, brought back to reality with your physical abilities every now and then, so just an FYI. Anyway, um, so what happens is these people that are dealing with this fluctuating thyroid hormone, they don't feel well. They get these diffuse pain syndromes, brain fog, moodiness, etc. But here's what's happening. Right, they're fluctuating their TSH value because that's the nature of Hashimoto. So here you are with this patient. TSH is low when they come into your office, and they feel like garbage. Right? You've got to explain it to them somehow. They're on thyroid meds. TSH is 0.5. The doctor says it's awesome. It's not their thyroid. That's not why they're gaining weight. That's not why they're depressed and tired and feeling terrible. It's not your thyroid. You just need to eat less and exercise more. And so what happens is you get to be the bearer of wonderful news. The bearer of like the best news they've ever heard. And so we're going to be in a position now where we want to communicate this to the person so that they have the capacity to make some sense out of their physiology. So here's how I do it. Not every time. But here's how you would communicate this mechanism to somebody. So you walk in. You have a 0.5 for your TSH value, and that's about it. Maybe your T3, uh, your T4, your free T4, excuse me, easy for me to say, is measured as well because your endocrinologist is forward thinking and they want to get not just the TSH, we've got to see how much hormone's in there as well. So you go through the process, you get it organized, and sure enough, T4 values in range, TSH is in the epically humongous laboratory range, usually 0.45 to 4.5 or 0.5 to 5. And uh, so the doctor tells you, you're crazy, man. You just need to eat less and exercise more. So now you're sitting in front of me. And it's my job to communicate to you that you have been underdiagnosed. Because the lab test that I have on you now, the one that we did the first time I met you, this thyroid antibody screen says that you, you, doctor, have Hashimoto's. What's interesting that this laboratory test that you have in front of me from your primary care doctor can't possibly be an accurate reflection of your physiology. You're gaining weight. Your energy is low, but yet your TSH is low. So if the TSH is low, what should be the case? You should have awesome energy. You should be telling me, man, I just can't keep this body weight on, Dr. Brad. Man, I just, I got so much energy, I got to go jogging at night before I go to bed. I just got to spend some of this stuff. And you end up in this spot where life doesn't make sense because your physiology is telling you numbers on one page that don't match how you're feeling in reality. So here's the cool part. When you take care of somebody's immune system, when you support them with the appropriate antioxidant structure, when you support them with nutrients that are going to help them build physiology rather than just replace physiology, What happens is their immune system begins to calm down. That fire, instead of pouring gas on it all day long, because you've customized a dietary recommendation for them based off their chemistries, because you're customizing supplementation recommendations for them based off their chemistries, they're custom engineering a lifestyle now 
their physiology is going to change. Their immune system slows down the irritation, the attack as it is, on that thyroid. It slows down. Now, once that light switch is turned on, the genetic light switch of Hashimoto's, it's my opinion that it's not shutting off. Like, you're not going to shut the light switch off, right? The DNA has been expressed. But what's cool is that through epigenetics, you can control the expression. I mean, you're not just stuck with Hashimoto's in full bore overdrive forever. You have control over the epigenetic expression of it. And that's where the custom engineering of the lifestyle comes into play. So let's get back to the mechanism here again. But one of the things that takes place is when we stop pouring gas on the fire, and remember the fire is attacking the thyroid, the fire begins to calm down. When it starts to calm down, the mess that happens with the thyroid begins to chill out a little bit. When it chills out, we have less of the mean little kid popping the water balloons with the needle. We have less of the immune system destroying the thyroid, and we end up with a TSH that rises. Why? Less thyroid hormone leaching, less thyroid hormone leaking, whatever you want to call it, there's less of it happening. So the TSH goes up. Now the reason this is cool is because some of the medical literature that's out there today is going to express a situation where when somebody has a diagnosed autoimmune condition, they got a 75% chance, three out of four chance, that they're going to end up with another autoimmune condition diagnosed before they die. It's not like awesome odds. It's not a very cool outlook, right? It's like if there's a tornado boiling through your town right now, well, 75% chance of the next three days, you're going to end up with another tornado. Like if it was a natural disaster situation, we'd probably try to figure out how to do something about it. But since it's people's health and it's slow growing and it's just, you know, on down the line, it's just a roll of the dice. It's just what happens, right? All right. So I'm being sarcastic, obviously, but the point is, is that you got to control this stuff. You don't want to end up, you know, having Hashimoto's as a gateway for MS, okay? or Hashimoto's as a gateway for something that starts to mess with how you look and feel. And uh, so we end up in this position where we have this mechanism now that's being under control a little bit more appropriately because you custom engineering a lifestyle. And it's awesome, right? So they're doing the do's. They're following the laboratory diagnostic procedures. They're getting the supplementation taken care of. They're eating well. They're eating for their physiology now. The immune system's chilling out. Fire's going down. Fire's not attacking the thyroid as much anymore. And so now you see the TSH rising. The brain responds and says, hey, boss, we need some more thyroid hormone up here. That's when you know you're getting good. That's when you know you're moving in the right position. And so they go back to the primary care doctor at that point. So if that's the doctor that's running the labs, and the doctor says, hey, you're worse. You need to double your thyroid medication. We're going from 50 micrograms to 100. We're going from 75 to 150, right? And by the way, we can do a podcast at some point on the downfalls of levothyroxine as a thyroid supplement, thyroid supplement, thyroid medication, excuse me, because uh, if you have read any of the literature on this stuff, it's causing SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth syndrome in people. It's wild, right? And it's stuff that's just coming out in the last five years. So anyway, um, but what happens is the TSH goes up as you're pushing the right buttons in the mechanism here. And that's why I like running lab tests on my patients because I get to see it first and then I can tell them here's how we go about rectifying the situation. Here's how you talk to the primary care doctor to rectify the situation. Here's the conversation that you have. Here's what they're going to say and then here's what you do. Okay. So what happens is they get this lab test that comes back. Now the TSH instead of 0.5 is 6.5. Do your happy dance for that person. Their immune system is chilling out, right? We can support the body's ability to have a normal TSH by utilizing some of the more holistic approaches if you like to do that type of thing. Um, and in my clinic uh, and in my practice, I should say, that would be something that I would typically do. Um, whether you use glandulars or if you're not into that or you use things that are um, like cofactors for thyroid hormone, hormone production, if you're into that, that's cool. Right? A lot of companies out there that do a lot of good work with that type of thing. Um, but if you're not planning on taking care of this patient for the rest of their life, if you're not planning on educating them through the process along the way, then what you're going to do is make sure that they get their thyroid medication adjusted. Ultimately, that's going to be the easiest thing to do for you 
ultimately is going to be the easiest thing for them to do because they're not sitting there stuck dealing with you know a fluctuating mechanism and then somebody that's not going to be around to give them the supplementation they need right like the medical doctor in the pharmaceutical industry is not going away ever and so in this instance what I would do is have this conversation with the patient accordingly all right so you're the patient so Bob what's happening is you're controlling your immune system remember you have Hashimoto's Hashimoto's is an autoimmune condition where your immune system is jacking up your thyroid and I told you back when we started see I wrote it here on your lab that said you had Hashimoto's I told you that you would know that we're heading in the right direction when your TSH starts to rise All right, and I know that sounded weird back then because you are like rise doesn't that mean I'm getting worse no it was gonna rise right, because you're controlling your immune system and so what I want you to do is we need to have a conversation with your primary care doctor because at some point this TSH needs to come down can't have TSH elevated for a long time because it's super toxic in your brain and plus we want your metabolism to pick up the pace I want you to feel well I want you to sleep well I want you to think well and I want you to lose the last seven pounds that we're working on here so with that in mind we need to get your thyroid medication dialed in that's not my job that's theirs and they'll do it based off of the calculations that they use with your body weight and your age and all the stuff okay so what we're going to do is I'm going to fax this lab over to your primary care doctor if you say I can. Just sign this little sheet that says so. And then what we're going to plan on is give them two days to find out you know, what to do with you. Give them two days. And then I want you to call them if they don't call you first. I want you to call them. And I want you to ask them, Dr. Jones, did you uh, get the copy of the lab test from my nutritionist or from my functional medicine provider? And they're going to be like, yep, what are you guys doing? It's not working. Be like well yeah so this is the conversation you're gonna have with them well yeah I just I, it looks like we need to dial in my thyroid medication all right so just let them do it it's not your job to educate the medical doctor okay there's too much brain damage I've tried to do it enough times that uh, you just let them play into their line of thought let them take care of your patient for you and move on all right so they're not necessarily good planners they're very good order fillers though and so what happens in this, uh, this pattern here, this, this conversation, is you just tell the patient that's how it's going to go. Let them dial in your thyroid medication. Your TSH is going to come down. We're going to continue working on your immune system here. Your thyroid right now is just showing itself for what it's really capable of when we stop destroying it with the immune system. And it's beautiful. So the conversation goes along the lines of that. Right? If you're not going to go down the road with hey, you need to go back to your doctor and, and handle the medication situation where the patient says, forget that, I'm not into that doctor. Or I'm not on thyroid medication, how about that one? I'm not on thyroid medication. Well, legally it's my job to tell you that you need to go back to the primary care doctor and get your medication adjusted or start. Right? But right now, what I'm gonna do is support your body's ability to bring that TSH down and do it the way that you've been taught. So that's a super important conversation to have because you're setting expectations with the patient, what their interaction is going to be with the medical doctor, and then what your interaction is going to be with them after the medication change. So you're handling all of the parts of the recipe instead of just letting the recipe unfold on its own and having fires to put out and a patient that's upset because the MD told them that they're getting worse and all the stuff. All right, so not exactly what you thought you were going to hear today. But the point is, is that this is a conversation that you have to have in your tool bag because you're going to come across it. Some of the medical literature says that 8 out of 10 people that have low thyroid are dealing with Hashimoto's. Some of it says more, right? 8 to 9 out of 10. I go on the short side of it just because you're always safe in that instance, but holy cow. 8 out of 10 people on thyroid medication dealing with Hashimoto's. It's not rare. It's not rare at all. Now, with that in mind, you get the opportunity to make a huge difference in somebody's life because when their immune system chills out, man, it's like the cloud lifts. It's like they become who they knew they could be. And it's like the situation that develops where they just have this, I call it perma smile, where it just starts to grow, right? Not because you're like healing them or fixing them, but because you're educating them in a clinical setting, gives them the opportunity just to see their body return to normal. 
It's that innate intelligence thing that's inside of you that just, it knows what to do. If you work with it, it works better, it works faster, it works harder. If you work against it, it still knows what to do. It's just a little sluggish. It's just a little irritated. It's just a little behind in its function. So all of that to say, you have the capacity to explain this mechanism to your patients. All right? So here it is in a nutshell. The immune system's attacking the thyroid. The thyroid's leaching hormone into the bloodstream. That hormone gives signal back to your brain that makes your brain think your metabolism is awesome. That's what it looks like on paper here. But guess what? All of your symptoms tell me your metabolism is not awesome. It tells me your metabolism stinks. So what we're doing is we're supporting the immune system to calm down the fire. Fire stops attacking the thyroid at such a strong rate. TSH goes up, so when we know what we're doing is helping you. We get that TSH dialed in now supplementally, supporting the body's ability to handle it, or your pharmaceutical and your medical doctor does that for you, right? And at that point then, you start to see normal function return. You start to see the old Bob, the old Susan, right? You start to see the old Sarah returning. Your kids don't drive you crazy anymore because you have the capacity to keep up with them, not just mentally, but physically. You have the capacity to be the mom that you want to be. You have the capacity to be the leader of your business that you're trying to be, the leader that all of your employees need, right? The leader your family needs. You have your capacity to be the teacher, your little kids in your class, the teacher that they had at the beginning of the year, right? That you have the capacity to have a comeback with this. Now, when you can help somebody return to that style of function, oh man, you are giving them the capacity for health and healing, right? Uncovering the awesomeness that is their innate intelligence. You're turning the lights back on. That's what you're doing as a functional medicine provider. That's what you're doing as a clinical nutritionist. All right. So the more, more of the story is today, learn the Hashimoto's mechanism, right? You want an email on that with a video? That'd be kind of cool. If you want a video on that, I can show you a diagram where we talk about it, organize it so you can draw that diagram for your patients if you want. If it's too hard for you to picture the words that I was just laying out here for you today, Maybe that diagram will help you. So you can email me, brad at biogenetics.com, brad at biogenetics.com, and I'll send you an email personally. We'll get you taken care of. With that in mind, you've been listening to the Nutrition Hero Podcast. This is Dr. Brad Watts. Hope you found some value in what we're talking about today. It's going to help somebody's life, right? You're going to coordinate. You're going to organize. You're going to help them turn their physiology around. Not only are they going to love you for it, but they're gonna fall in love with their body again. They're gonna fall in love with their health again. All because they came into contact with the nutrition heroes. All right, until next time, we'll catch you guys later. Blessings.